The means are all over the place, and we use them for many things. So it's not surprising that there are numerous ways to make them. I've selected six reactions to make amines that turn up more than the others. Let me give you an overview of all six, and then I'll talk about them one at a time. You can treat amine directly with an alkyl halide and alkylate that nitrogen. This works for ammonia, primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, so it's widely used. An alternative alkylation scheme starts with a very odd looking compound and alkylates the nitrogen and then hydrolyzes that compound to make a primary amine. The other four reactions are all reductions of one kind or another. Lithium aluminum hydride is a powerful reducing agent and it reduces nitriles to primary amines. You end up with a CH2, NH2 in all the molecules plus whatever alkyl group was attached to the nitrile. You can use the same reducing agent to reduce amides. In this case, it isn't necessarily a primary amine. You could be making a secondary or tertiary amine as well. And like above, you end up with a CH2 group there from reduction of the carbonyl. There's a bit of an unusual reducing agent, sodium cyanoborohydride, that can be used in conjunction with amines and ketones or aldehydes to make more complicated amines. And the sixth reaction is specifically for aromatic amines. You reduce a nitro group that's attached directly to the ring to an NH2. The reducing agent is tin, very different from the other ones above. You can attach an alkyl group to nitrogen when that nitrogen has an unshared pair of electrons. This is an SN2 reaction. And like other SN2 reactions, the alkyl halide should be primary. It cannot be tertiary. So that places limitations on the structures that you can make. This reaction works whether you start with ammonia, a primary amine, a secondary amine, or a tertiary amine. So look at this. If you use ammonia, you make a primary amine, and primary amines react with the same alkyl halide to make secondary amines. Secondary make tertiary amines, and tertiary amines make quaternary ammonium salts. So as you'd expect, in many cases, this is not a great way to make amines because you get bad mixtures. You can only really count on this reaction to make quaternary ammonium salts because that product can't alkylate anymore. In fact, as I'll talk about in another lecture, this is an important step in the Hoffman elimination that turns amines into alkenes. There's a very clever way to avoid overalkylation if you want a primary amine. It's called the Gabriel synthesis of primary amines. It accomplishes the transformation of an alkyl halide into a primary amine, as we would do here if we treated with ammonia, but the product we make is not subject to additional alkylation, so the yields of primary amines are significantly better. If we used ammonia, we'd be looking at an SN2 reaction, and the Gabriel synthesis also uses an SN2 reaction. Take a look. You start with this rather odd-looking structure don't pay much attention to the stuff on the left. What's important is we have a nitrogen with an unshared pair of electrons and a negative charge. It's very nucleophilic, but because it has two carbonyl groups attached to it, the product can't alkylate. So when we have an SN2 reaction to attach the alkyl group, we make this product, which does not react further. Now, if you're looking at this dicarbonyl compound with a negative charge in between the two and saying, that looks a lot like something I've seen before, you are absolutely right. This is a whole lot like the malonic ester synthesis. In that case, we use a base to make the enolate, which is stabilized by resonance, but reacts at carbon. The carbon has a lone pair of electrons. It can act as a, in an SN2 reaction, just like I wrote above. This places the alkyl group between the two carbonyls, like we've written above. In the Gabriel synthesis, the alkyl group was on nitrogen, and here it's on carbon. And in the final step, we get rid of part of this molecule to have an alkyl group attached to a CH2. And that's exactly what the Gabriel synthesis does. In the final step, this intermediate is transformed to the primary amine. So here's the way the Gabriel synthesis usually is drawn. We start with this compound, which is a thalimid. We deprotonate using KOH to make this anion and then treat with the alkyl halide in a second step. Finally, this amide is hydrolyzed and we use base to free the amine to make a primary amine. 
For, so it's a four-step process that starts with valine. Yields are good, and you only get the primary amine. This is a synthesis that gives primary amines only. Let me show you another way to make primary amines. When a nitrile is treated with lithium aluminum hydride, this very powerful reducing agent, and water in the second step, you make a primary amine that has a CH2 group attached to the nitrogen. So to use this reaction, you have to be able to make the nitrile, which is usually done by treating an alkyl halide with cyanide. When you treat with cyanide, you have an SN2 reaction that replaces bromide with cyanide. The reduction follows to make the amine. Because this is an SN2 reaction, this should be primary and cannot be tertiary. So this places some structural limitations on the product you can make. There's another reduction using lithium aluminum hydride that also makes amines. When amides are treated with lithium aluminum hydride and then water, you make amines. You always have the CH2, but it isn't necessarily a primary amine. You can have alkyl groups, aryl groups, hydrogen attached. So this gives you a lot more flexibility about the structure. Primary, secondary, or tertiary means our products. The aluminum hydride anion acts like it's hydride with a negative charge, a pair of electrons on hydrogen. So we can picture nucleophilic addition to carbonyl, break that pi bond, just like we've seen in several cases. And in fact, to accomplish this reduction, this hydride needs to add twice. The oxygen of the carbonyl is replaced by two hydrogens. And this is nice, there are no restrictions on the group that can be here. So you have great flexibility in the structures you make this way. The R group attached to the carbonyl can vary. And whether you have alkyl groups or hydrogens, and what those alkyl groups are, including aryl groups, is totally flexible. So if you can make the amide of a carboxylic acid, you have a gateway to a wide variety of amines. Here's another reaction that depends on a rather strange looking reagent, but offers great flexibility in the amines you can make. You start with a ketone or aldehyde, so we may have H here. You treat with amine and sodium cyanoborohydride. This is a hydride source similar to lithium aluminum hydride, but not as strong. It's important that it be weaker because otherwise it would reduce the ketone or aldehyde carbonyl. When you carry out this reaction, you add a nitrogen and a hydrogen to the carbonyl carbon. And we can have hydrogen or alkyl groups attached to this nitrogen. So we can make primary, secondary, or tertiary means. This same transformation can be carried out in a two-step sequence of reactions. First, you add the ammonia or amine to make an imine. And in the second step, you use catalytic reducing conditions. The mechanism for this reaction also depends on this reducing agent being a source of hydride. In the first step, the amine reacts with an aldehyde or ketone to make an imine. Once the imine is formed, it's reduced by hydride. Simple nucleophilic addition to the double bond. This is like carbonyl, only with nitrogen. When the amine is added to the carbonyl as a primary amine, this imine is reduced to put a negative charge on that nitrogen, which is rapidly protonated to make the final product. Alternatively, we might do this reaction with a secondary amine, in which case, once the hydride adds by nucleophilic addition, there's a positive charge on the nitrogen that is satisfied, and we make the product we want directly. In either case, there's an equilibrium step where the amine adds to the carbonyl, and the subsequent reduction step where hydride reduces the amine. You can have just one R group attached to that nitrogen, or even none if we start with ammonia, or you can end up with two R groups attached, in which case you've just made a tertiary amine. And ammonia makes primary amines, and primary amines make secondary amines in this process. So there's one final reaction I want to show you. It's a special reaction that's limited to making compounds with an NH2 group attached directly to an aromatic ring. This is aniline or substituted anilines. You treat an aromatic nitro compound with tin and HCl. This is an electron transfer reduction, very different from the kind of thing we've seen before. And in the end, we neutralize using sodium hydroxide to make the amine. You have two electrons that are derived from tin plus two hydrogen ions from HCl. 
Well, this is fine, but you need to be able to make nitroaromatic compounds. And let me just remind you that those are readily made by treating an aromatic compound like benzene with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So a common sequence is to start with an aromatic compound, put the nitro group on, and then reduce it to make the NH2. This list of six reactions gives you the key methods for making amines. Once you get to know these six reactions, you'll be in good shape. 